Hey, what's going on, Los Angeles? What is up? And welcome to the Rams Skinny here on the LAFB Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Uh, we got uh, Skinny T out live at camp at Loyola Marymount. He's been there all week long, giving us our Rams updates. If you're not tuning into the Rams Skinny and you're not checking out LAFBnetwork.com, you're missing on great coverage. Ryan has been uh, crushing it all week there. I was gone at Big Ten Media Day out in Indianapolis, just got home last night. So I was covering that front, USC and UCLA. Ryan's been handling our Rams front and doing it well. So I'm really excited, honestly, to just chat with you and get myself even up to date on everything going on. But you look great. The hair looks great. The sun is shining. How, how's life down at LMU? You, you can't ask for a better place to uh, take in some football practice. That's for sure. This place is a beautiful campus. Mm-hmm. I'm parked way over in Lot H, which uh, is is about a quarter or the three quarters of a mile walk. Uh, so you get you get you get to take it all in. But it's it, you know it looks like a, a smaller, uh, cuter version of UCLA campus, and it's right by the ocean. So you got a nice breeze, beautiful sun. I mean, this is California at its best. Yeah. I was I was actually writing about it. I was looking at the campus on the map. And it's it's just south of beautiful uh, Playa del Rey, just a, a most like it's like a little beach town when you go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then just south of here, you got the most chaotic place in the world, LAX. Uh, so L- LMU's got this uh, interesting uh, you know dichotomy. So that's fantastic. Love it. Yeah, I was just I was you were at practice when I, my flight got back last night or yesterday afternoon, um, and I don't know how it's been. On those afternoon practices, but it took me almost two and a half hours to get home from LAX yesterday. So I'm hoping um, Tra- I'm, I'm venturing the to Chargers thing. camp later today in El Segundo, right by LAX. I'm hoping it's not the same story, but we'll see. Yeah, well, it wasn't too. All, all things considered, traffic has, has worked out well for me here. I was going to turn the uh, turn the camera around for everybody that's watching on YouTube, but you know we're in our radio section, so I'll save that. Uh, I'll save that till the end. There you go. Perfect. Sounds good. So. Um, but yeah, it looks beautiful. Uh, I think that I, I want to ask that anyway. But, um, you know, first show is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. Gets you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Obviously, Rams football is just around the corner. Matthew Stafford is our Super Bowl favorite. You can go put some money on it on Bet Online and bet on those futures and hopefully win some cash. So, betonline.ag, promo code BELIEVE. Tell them the guys at the Rams Skinny sent you. So, before we get into some unfortunate injury news, Stafford's contract, what the receiving room looks like. You kind of alluded to it, but just curious from your vantage point, positives, negatives, just differences of camp now being at LMU versus what it was at Irvine all those years. Uh, you know, it's a little closer to me, so that's a positive, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, we're a little bit closer to the the water, so you're getting that ocean breeze, like I said. Um, you know, I don't know if it's a drawback or a good thing, but there, this is a small, a far smaller setup as kind of we, as as we kind of talked about heading into this. Uh, you 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 were aware of the of this campus, and it is it is quite a bit smaller. There's just the one field. They actually have a uh, a baseball diamond converted uh, to a little bit of a special teams defensive uh unit uh warm-up area not far from here so it's um it's a little it's a little bit uh split up and 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 it 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 feels it feels a little bit actually a little bit homier for that reason Mm -hmm. everybody's just kind of jammed in here so uh yeah a little a little bit of good a little bit of bad i mean i i feel bad for those folks that couldn't make it out because those tickets got scooped up super quick i went on the day after and they were all sold out so um but uh yeah it's uh you know, all things considered, I think this is this is a nice change. It's temporary, though. I mean, I, I think next year they're going to be over at the at the new um, facility, yeah, uh, facility uh, in uh, Sherman Oaks, Wood, Woodland Hills, Maybe. I think, right there, Woodland yeah. Hills, Woodland Hills, yeah. yeah, nice and hot. It'll be even hotter. At least you've got that ocean breeze right now. It'll be much hotter next year when you're there. Absolutely. <laughs> so, well, great. It looks beautiful. I, I've seen obviously the pictures and stuff, and I, I definitely plan to hopefully get out there uh, with you one of these days. But Ryan will be there all the media availability camp days. So make sure you're tuning in, uh, not just to Ram Skinny, but to LAFBnetwork.com for all his articles and obviously at RL Anderson LAFB for all your up-to-date uh, news and information with the Rams here at camp. So speaking of that, we won't spend a lot of time on this because it's now kind of old news, but uh, at the start of camp on Wednesday, I guess it was big news to an, an ex- degree. Matthew Stafford's contract no longer and quote-unquote issue. They added some... I'll just let you talk on it. Like what actually happened with the contract to your knowledge. And obviously Stafford's been there every day, which we expected regardless, but it's good to know that that is not now going to be talked about anymore, at least for this season. 
Yeah, I mean the 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 specifics on the contract have not really been uh, opened up. It's not an extension. That was the big the big differentiation is that he's not extended. But uh, obviously, yeah. he wanted some more guaranteed money. He wanted uh, um, to have uh, some some security in that way for at the very least. Um, so that's uh, that that's what they accomplished. And you know, they both he and McVeigh at their post uh, pre- post practice press conference uh, just kind of really downplayed it. Um, you know, he's, he's super happy to be out here. McVeigh's super ha- happy to have him. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's a testament to what a great organization this is because you look around the league at different holdouts, different hold-ins. Jordan Love all of a sudden unhappy with his contract, even though, though he's only played eight good games. At least Stafford, <laughs> you know, he's he brought home the Super Bowl, uh, put together a fantastic season last year uh, before he went went ahead and, and wanted more money. So, uh, you know, just just a testament to this this place and, you know, we don't like it when they say we're keeping things in house uh, from the media perspective, uh, but uh, that's exactly what they did, and they were very consistent uh, across yep. that board. And um, you know, it's you know, from a fan perspective, from the outside perspective, from a team building perspective, really, there's one number that matters, and it's that cap hit. Um, and and th- uh, what the Rams are great at is uh, affecting the cap hit. How do they? How do they? How do they change that? So that's that's what I'm most curious to see is what the next few years look like from a cap perspective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the big word everyone was using was uh, contract adjustment, essentially, um, which we don't really know what that means, but we have to assume it's definitely some change, some added guarantees to year two and three, since this year was the the loan guaranteed year for the remaining three total. So um, as we know more, we will uh, certainly obviously uh, report on that, but it's good to know. It doesn't need to be talked about the rest of camp. Um, again, it, they said all along and things were being worked on. Didn't, wasn't going to be an issue. It wasn't an issue. Like to, to their credit, they got it done the day of, I think Stafford was what, like an hour late because of it. And everyone was like, Oh, yeah. Stafford's not here. And then he trots <laughs> out and it's like, he was late because he was literally signing documents. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, gotta love it. Yeah. Have all this time. But let's wait till the day of camp to get these signed. Classic. Well, you know that's 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 how it works these sometimes, and uh, you know the 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 timeline, the clock is is the ultimate master of all these things. And obviously, the Rams want it out here, and it's just a mystery to me why you know uh, you know quarterback deals especially. It's like get those done. You're, who else are you gonna go out and you, who else are you gonna get? You're gonna get somebody better than Stafford right now. Yeah. You go sign. Uh, 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 Tannehill right now? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. He's still out there. So apparently the NFL doesn't use DocuSign either. Like you got to be in house in person when with that pen on a, on that on paper. So no DocuSign well, when they're in Cabo or something. You know, they're they're very, very protective of all of all of this stuff and for good reason. But I was mm. uh, Robert Mays, a uh, fantastic podcaster uh, and a, a great mind of, in football was out here the last couple of days. And we were just kind of I was asking him about you know, how serious should I take all these rules about filming things? And, and, and he said he talked to defensive uh, coaches that go on to they scour the Internet. They go through mm-hmm. Twitter. They go through all the Instagram stuff trying to find any kind of edge. And so, uh, you know, there's reasons to saw the cloak and dagger out there. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, if we're doing it, why wouldn't coaches be doing it <laughs> if we're looking for all yeah. that? So uh, makes total sense. OK, cool. Staffers done. First point of business done. Check that off. Very important. Now, unfortunately, it seems like every year, not just with the Rams, but just in training camp, it's like you get these injuries right away and people can blame whatever they want. It's just unfortunate how it happens. But Darren Kendrick, torn ACL, Darius Williams, also banged up. I don't know if there's been an update fully on what that is. Maybe you have one. Um, but I guess just your kind of from your vantage point, like the play that I don't know if you saw when it happened with Kendrick, when he tried off, when it happened with Williams, um, if you're hearing anything else, but obviously very unfortunate news for the Rams who, uh, you know, Kendrick was going to be a nice depth piece, obviously got some starts last year. And then Williams was seen as a starter this year. And we don't, again, don't know the severity of it yet, but just kind of your thoughts on the injury front. Yeah. For, for the the Kendrick thing, it's all about the depth. Um, And McVay went into a little bit of detail about that. And it's not just losing one player. That means everybody else in those depth positions, their workload is going to be increased Mm -hmm. and they're going to have to step up and take on more, which, um, you know, from a group perspective, he was saying that that has the potential to lead to more injuries in the same, in the same group, kind of like how we saw with the offensive line a couple of years when it was just every guy just kind of falling one after another. Yeah. That's an extreme example a very extreme example, but that's just kind of an example of how, um, when, 
people are forced into positions, into more work, heavier workload. Sometimes that can have a deleterious effect across the board. Um, you know, Real quick. You know, he's got a yes. Deleterious. Well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> I cut you on your run, well, but that was I was like, ooh, look at there's the right in you. All right, continue. I, I I'm a man of words. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of the play itself, it, it's the strangest thing. The only thing I saw was Darian Kendrick walk off the field mad. He was upset mm-hmm. about something, uh, but he was walking just fine. Um, which is it's kind of incredible. Sometimes you see those ACLs and they're just down on the ground, they can't move. Uh, but this is going to require surgery. Um, they just put him on the IR. I'm sure that's going to be a season long uh, kind of a thing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, unfor- really unfortunate. And and Sean McVay really um, was impressed with uh, uh, his, his uh, season so far, his off season so far. Uh, but the thing that he said uh, was he he knows that there's not a guy on this team that's going to come back from a setback like this stronger and quicker uh, than Darian Kendrick. And that's something that I always appreciated about the guy uh, mm-hmm. is that he would bounce back from those bad plays that he had. And I admit that he had those, but he would come back um, ready to go, ready to to uh, take on uh, the next challenge, uh, just yeah. just uh, just like he did the other one, uh, rain or shine. So, you know, we, we wish him the best of uh, for uh, for D. Will. I saw the play happen. It was a really incredible play down the left sideline, deep play. Uh, he just came up hobbled, uh, yeah. kind of holding holding that left left hamstring. McVeigh confirmed that it was left hamstring, but he has no idea. No updates on that yet. I'm sure there's going to be some updates, and I'll I'll let you guys know uh, via Twitter. Players are just making their their way to the field right now. Uh, if he's out here, number 24 is out here. I'll let you guys know. Uh, but today's going to be a a, a deload day, as they call. So. Uh, no helmets, uh, no pads, it looks like. Um, so it's going to be a lighter practice, a lot of walkthroughs. Yeah. So he may be out here, but uh, pr- nobody's going full speed today. Yeah. So these are the days that are not fun for fans because it's just like they, half the time. I remember last year, like Stafford wasn't even throwing the football. <laughs> just like, yeah. yeah. Just, so there'll be a lot of that. But um, yeah, hopefully, uh, obviously, very unfortunate for Kendricks. And, and you said it best, uh, you know for some of the frustrating things he did last year, he would bounce back and make some incredible plays. And, and it was, it was a roller coaster season for him, but the, the positives were really good. And you hope to see that improvement this year. Unfortunately, that'll have to wait a year. So best of luck for speed recovery and, and D will. Yeah. Hopefully it's just something that's training camp. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, one thing, uh, Gary Klein of the LA times asked, uh, McVeigh afterwards, if they're open to uh, looking into bringing back a Kella Witherspoon, who still is available, uh, and and he said that that option is definitely on the table, and he loved working with Akello, uh yesterday or uh, last year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, th- there's there's still uh, free agents out there, and uh, fr- fans are very uh, aware of uh, Kella Witherspoon, also for the for better and for worse. Well, it's it's great you said that because I was going to say as we've been talking the last five minutes. Just popped up. I don't think it's official yet. Obviously, as we just mentioned, NFL doesn't like docu signs. They got to get him in the building to sign. Um, but Rams looking to sign uh, Jerry Jacobs, formerly of the Lions, a former JUCO product, actually. Wow. Um, played at Hutchinson Community College, Arkansas State, and Arkansas in college, and then was with the Lions uh, the previous two years. So looking like they do add some depth there. It's interesting that they would go that route and not a Killer Witherspoon. Who knows? the system not and, and again maybe they will add both i mean especially with both you know kendrick out and d will banged up maybe that it was just going to take longer to get the money right for witherspoon whereas jacob's not but anyway as of right now by the time i publish this things could change um but looks like jerry jacobs is being added to the roster i don't know if you've even heard that name before never heard that name uh <laughs> some of those colleges are a mystery to me as well um but you know perhaps that is a uh uh, a good sign for um, uh, Williams' uh, prognosis about his injury. Perhaps they're not looking for a starter, yeah. but just a depth piece to, to, True. to take some snaps. So good. that's just conjecture, complete pulling that out of my ear. Um, but uh, perhaps. Yeah, good call. Good call, though. That's a good way to look at it, which that's just reminded me. This is way off topic, but uh, I just have to tell you, at Big Ten Media Day, there was a there was a very large – Carney, Nebraska contingent there. Obviously they're covering Nebraska, but I was met, I met a few reporters that from Carney. So I was like, ah, oh, look at that. Wow. That's, yeah. that, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carney, Carney, Nebraska, for those of you that don't know is, is my hometown. I went to high school and college there. A cat and a loper. Uh, if you're not familiar with the university of Nebraska at Carney, uh, the lopers is the mascot, but, uh, lopers. wow, that's incredible. You know, I, 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 I feel so silly that last year, our, our kicker, uh, the Rams kicker was from Carney, uh, Nebraska, and I. 
we found out like a few a uh, few episodes in or something like oh he's yeah, literally from yeah. your hometown i think you said it yeah. um well great so i want to quickly uh and again it's hard to tell two days in the camp but you look we've talked about the running backs and obviously uh you know that draft pick blake corn kyron williams who you know battled an injury a little bit early in the otas uh early in the offseason program um, but you mentioned before we went on air, I won't, I won't spoil it, I guess, but you know, there's been one running back that's really kind of shined and we've talked about, we feasibly see four backs on this roster. Um, and it seems like he's making a case for him to be one of those four. What have you seen from the running back room so far? Yeah. Kyron Williams moving at full speed. Uh, they're keeping him on a bit of a pitch count just to, as they say, be smart with him. They say that about every, every injured player, we're going to be smart with him. That's, that's great to hear. Um, but, uh, he's looking great. Um, and, uh, Sean McVay in his press conference has reiterated, it starts with Kyron. Um, but they're working, uh, Blake Corum in there regularly. He's going to be a big part of this. Uh, we, we kind of thought that heading into this, but Ronnie rivers, um, you know, he's getting a lot of touches. Uh, he made an incredible catch yesterday. Uh, really something uh, really special. Uh, just stopped on a dime, made the cornerback over, overreact, and uh, just contorted his body, caught that, caught that ball um, in, in just only one spot that it could be to, to be there. So, um, you know, and, and just getting a lot of, a lot of touches, a lot of work. Um, you know, he's obviously the veteran guy of the other guys that are uh, veter- veteran in terms of, of Rams uh, players. Um, so, you, you got to assume he's kind of got that leg up on the third spot. We haven't seen a lot from uh, Boston Scott, even less from Zach Evans. Uh, Boston Scott kind of idea might be there for special teams uh, mm-hmm. specialist for that new kick return rules, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll see uh, as that kind of plays out. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie Rivers, that guy. And I don't mean this disrespectfully, but it's like everyone kind of is like, okay, they're bringing someone else to replace him, and he just always hangs around. Just hangs around. Gets a roster spot. The coaches love him. His work ethic. He finds his way onto the field. Like he's just that guy that continually you think like oh yeah he's the odd man out it's like no he's actually like rb2 like he just keeps hanging around yeah you know consistency is is one of the best attributes for football players and uh from what i've seen that 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 that's what he that's how he you know uh keeps hangs around is he's just he is who he is you know we know his ceiling and we know his floor and that's where he's going to operate and uh you know knowing that is is a good thing yeah um, okay, we'll get you out of here soon because I know practice is starting, so we want to get you out there and, and be able to cover that. Uh, so two more for you. Have you seen anything from the defense? Again, it's early, not even in really full pads necessarily. They're not really tackling as they don't do at any Rams training camp, but have you been able to see some of the young guys, Fisk, Versk? Have you seen the secondary, obviously, besides the injuries? What have you seen from the defense so far? Yeah, in terms of the defensive line, it's been really interesting to watch uh, just the rotation. Um you know, can't comment too much on exactly uh, uh, reps and, and snap count and things like that. But the rotation has involved all, all of those guys. Um, and verse um, verse is going to be out there a lot. Um, you know, we're speculating some with uh, uh, Byron Young a bit, um, but verse is, is kind of moved uh, into that starting role. I see uh, from what I see. And, um, you know, f- furthermore, I th- he's, he's out here and he's really vocal. Uh, and it seems to be taking on a, a big leadership role, uh, even just as a rookie, which is which is great to see, um, yeah. you know, with a kind of a void of Aaron Donald. Um, you know, he was never like the most vocal leader, but obviously a leader uh, just because everybody is uh, scared uh, of him entirely. <laughs> so uh, they're going to they're going to do everything. But what I'm saying is verse versus showing out um, Fisk has made some plays as well. Uh, and then moving into the secondary, uh, I've been really impressed with Kobe, Kobe Durant. Um, mm. You know, they've been moving him around a lot. I've been interested to see how the, the versatility kind of has changed uh, with all these new guys. You know, obviously, D. Will and um, Trinavious White are strictly outside guys. But then you got all this movement between safeties and, and the slot. And, and if, if Kobe can play that outside, um, that'll be great. Um, you know, Cam Curl as well. Um, really really shining so far uh no pads so mm-hmm. it's gonna be a deload day so uh, not not a lot to learn so far at, at the line of scrimmage uh but they're uh they have got some good pressure uh on this offensive line so you know you're seeing the young guys going after this new offensive line and and they've looked pretty good love it yeah it's great it's good to hear verse already heavily involved um so clearly you know things can change but that shows their plans for him and how high they are on him obviously being the first round pick, but living up to that so far, at least in the off season workouts. So um, yeah, great to see you. So when this is, we'll just end up kind of with this. So I don't know if you saw Steve Avila 
tweeted after practice that he would apologize. He couldn't stay longer. He wanted to stay and sign autographs for every fan. Um, but obviously all these teams, you kind of, they have like, you know, they go to meetings after it's, so they kind of a lot a certain amount of time and they pull players away. So um, have you seen the, uh, have you seen the autograph uh, distribution with fans and has it been fun for just kind of a fun environment? Cause that's kind of the best part for fans for training camp is if you have a kid go out there, they meet the players, they get the autograph and great to see our starting center love interacting with fans. Yeah, no, he seems like a super nice guy. Seems, uh, you know, like I've, you know, interviewed him a couple of times, just, just a, a really nice guy. And I, you know, he was kind of one of the last guys out on the field because he was he had two interviews lined up uh, with a couple of the TV stations, and fans were just screaming for him and screaming for him the entire time he was being interviewed. And so he made his way over there, but he was already late getting off the field. So, um, yeah, it's 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 fun to see though. I mean, it's 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 nice to know that he cares, and you know, it's uh, you know, all the fans are super excited to get an autograph from from just about anybody. It's a long snapper, you know, yeah. third, third string. Uh, defensive linemen, you know, any of those offensive linemen, uh, you know, just ton of enthusiasm. And these guys love, you know, love, love being out here. And this, they have a bit more access out here. These fans do. Um, like I said, it's a bit more intimate. So that's one of the things that's better is more guys are able to go over there um, and they're able to spend, a, you know, significant time, s- significant time with the fans. So it's love good it. to see. Love seeing that. So I always love being at camp, seeing the players and the fans interaction. Cause it's the one time of the season you get it. So, um, but with that, we'll get you out of here. I know, tr- uh, practice is starting skinny T live at Rams training camp. We'll have plenty more, uh, updates, plenty more live shows, obviously tons of articles LA over at LAFB network.com. So make sure you're checking that out at RL Anderson. LAFB is his Twitter handle for all those quick updates at LAFB network is the main handle. And obviously LAFB network.com is the website. So skinny T you, the man, great stuff as always, uh, looking good, have fun. And obviously we'll talk. Should we oh, show yeah, the show setup? the field real quick. Yeah, yeah. Let's see it. Yeah. Look at that. All right, so there's there's the stands. That's pretty much all of the fan section there. Got the field here. They're just setting up on uh, some. Uh, op- well, what do you call it when you're when you're backed up against the uh, the goal line? Anyway. Yeah. And then you got you got the VIP tents there. Nice. So, Looks good. I like that's it. That's the yeah. setup. Intimate setup, yeah, but I like it. Soccer field. Good grass. Good grass. Cooper Cup agreed. It was good grass. That's that's all that matters. If if Cup agrees, we're good. Which we'll talk a lot more about Cooper Cup uh, next episode and Puka Nakua. So give them a few more days to to get acclimated. So, but Skinny, you're the man. Thanks so much. Talk soon.